Hello everyone, welcome to another Java for Testers tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to look into the for loop in Java. So we have already seen about the while loop and do while loop and what is the difference between the, the while and do while loop. Now we will also understand the for loop, which is another loop that is available in Java. So in the for loop, uh, the difference between the while and do while and for loop is basically so uh, while and do while I have already explained, but the for loop is sort of completely different uh, in terms of syntax. So what happens in, while, uh, in for loop is that initialization and then condition checking and updation happens in the single line. So if we, I'll, I'll show you the syntax in a couple of minutes. Um, so if you see, you know, these previous loops that we have seen. So this is the initialization that we are doing. So int i, we are initializing the value as one to the integer i. And then we are doing the, we are, we are checking the condition, right? So we are in do while we are checking the condition afterwards. And then we are doing the increment in within this particular block. Then in the while we are doing initialization separately, we are checking the condition with this while keyword here, right? We are checking the condition and then we are doing increment inside the loop, right? So this is how we were doing for the while and do while. However, in case of for loop, the syntax is something you, the keyword is for, okay? So you see, you start with the initialization, all right? So you initialize here, so I'll say init, and then the next so with the semicolon then you check for the condition right so you check condition and then you increment or decrement or i'll say you update okay updation so this happens in a single line in for loop and then within the you know curly braces you have the statements that you want to do you want to execute so this is the simple syntax for the for loop and we'll understand this with an example. I'll create a new Java file, uh, Java class, and I'll name it as for loop demo. Include the main method and click finish. Okay. So as we have understood that in the for loop, we are doing the initialization, condition checking and updation in the same line. So I'll simply say for, I'll initialize an integer i is equal to one and then semicolon i'll check for a condition so condition i want to check say for example i is less than 10 i want to print numbers from 1 to 10 okay so i'll check for the condition uh, while i is less than or equal to 10 i want to print 10 as well and then i want to increment so i'll do the increment as well along with this you know loop okay and then starts the curly brace and enter. So this curly brace, yeah, okay. Let me format this and now within this, you know, curly braces, so this is the start of the loop. So, and this is the end of the for loop. Now within this for loop, I can have my statements that I want to execute. So I just want to print the numbers from one to 10. So I'll simply print the value I here, okay and then it will check for the condition again so it, let, let's try to execute it and then see how it behaves so let me execute and you will see that it has printed numbers from 1 to 10 okay now let's understand this particular code so this is the initialization step okay after the i has been initialized it is being checked for the condition so the condition which is in the same line so one is less than or equal to 10, that's true. If it is true, it came within this block here, right? It printed one. Next time it went and checked for, or it incremented this value. So as soon as this, you know, block got executed, it comes and updates this value. That's the next step. So the next step that happens, so after the increment, the value of I became two then it got checked again so 2 is less than or equal to 10 yes it again came into the loop it printed 2 then again 2 got incremented to 3 3 got checked for the condition 
again within the loop printed three three got incremented to four four got checked with the condition and that's how it kept progressing until this condition became false so the key thing to understand with the for loop is that initialization happens only once okay then the increment so after the execution happened of the loop next step is to for the increment whatever increment or decrement operator you have specified that happens and then again the condition is checked so this is the process initialization happens once then the execution if the condition is true within the loop if not then it comes out of the loop if the condition hasn't been met for the first time itself so that's the key thing to remember about the for loop now another important thing with the for loop is so for example i don't want to initialize this value within the for loop can i do this if i want to initialize it outside of the loop yes you can so you here you just have to make sure that this semicolon is mentioned there so two semicolons are mandatory if within the for loop if i uh, just to specify just two semicolons i'll just remove this and i'll simply put two semicolons within the for loop this loop is still valid this is still a correct syntax okay um, the only thing is so i'm not initializing the value inside this for loop and i i'm not checking for the condition and i'm not incrementing so you can do all of these steps separately as well but that's not recommended if you're you know uh, using the for loop so we use for loop because there is a reason or you have the specific format and there is a reason to use the for loop so i have initialized it, it outside i can still do it i can check for you know this condition or i can you know increment this rather than here i can put the increment within the for loop okay and the result will be still same so if i you know clear this and run this piece of code you will still see that initialization happened you know outside of this for loop then it came and checked for the condition then it came within the loop it printed one and then incremented and then again check for the condition which is mentioned in the for loop so it is it is still possible to do this way but this is not you know the ideal way or approach when you are writing the for loop i'm just showing you that there is a possibility even though if you don't specify you know the condition checking within the for loop it is still possible to use the for loop as far as you have two semicolons within this particular loop now the next important and very important thing to remember about the loops is why do we have uh, different loops and what is the relevance of having while loop do while loop and for loop when they are sort of you know solving the similar purpose right so that's that's an important concept to remember say for example uh, when we say you know while loop so while loop will be used in the real scenarios whenever you don't know what are the number of iterations that you have to basically execute the particular piece of code and in the real example say i'll take an example of selenium and on the selenium website you have to find out what all links are available and these links are dynamic links so today there will be 50 links and tomorrow there might be you know like five more links added so you have to find those links and you have to see how many links are available and you want to verify those number of links and that number is not sure so in those sort of scenarios you don't know how many times you have to iterate through to work on those strings because that that uh, number is dynamic and that changes so in that case you have to use while loop because you don't know up till which point you have to iterate through so that's what the relevance of while loop is so when we say while loop you i'll just put the comments here so when we say while loop you don't know 
the number of iterations that you have to iterate okay so you don't know that then in that case you use the while loop now when when it comes to do while you use do while when you want to execute you want to execute the code at least once irrespective of the condition right irrespective of what whatever the condition is okay so you want to execute the piece of code irrespective of whatever the condition is so first time you still want to execute and you don't want to check the condition for the first time but when it comes to for loop you know the number of iterations that you want to execute up front okay so for example in this case right we know that i want to iterate up to 10. i want to print numbers from 1 to 10 in all three cases i have taken example of you know iterating through 1 to 10 but in the actual scenarios while loop will be really useful when you don't want to when you don't know the number of iterations do while you don't know the number of iterations but you still want to execute the code at least once uh, irrespective of whatever the condition is right so here in do while as well you still it still holds that you don't know the number of iterations but you still want to execute the code at least once even though the condition you know is evaluated to false in in that case still you want to execute at least once for loop you know upfront how many iterations you want to iterations you want to run okay so these are or this is you know three um, you know key differences where you will be using while or do while let me put it in the second line here so where you will use you know do while or where you will use you know, while and uh, the for loop so in while and do while you don't know the number of iterations but in for loop you use the for loop where you know how many times or how many iterations you are going to run a particular piece of code or the loop so this is you know the key point to remember for the while do while and for loop so that's all for this particular tutorial hope you like it thank you very much for watching